Good morning and welcome to the program Perspectives. My name, my name is Jacqueline Adebija and um, it's a pleasure to be here um, on the program. I hope your morning is going well and um, thank you for staying with uh, Invicta. Uh, before we delve into today's um, topic, uh, matter of discourse, I'd like to say that we're live on Facebook and so you can actually go on Facebook and drop your comments there and um, we'll be reading them as we see them. I'll be back shortly. Um, let's go on a quick break and then I'll be back. Once again, allow me to welcome you to the program Perspectives. My name is Jacqueline Adebija, and this morning we have with us um, someone who I call a friend, and um, he is, um, let's say, a veteran also in this um, industry. But before we go to that, let's talk about this nation. As nations go, and you know, discussions around nationhood. I know a lot of people um, would want to, um, you know, twaddle and diddle over the that terminology called nation. Some people will tell you that nations are, well, stuff of which Nigeria is yet to be made. And so it is indeed um, a country or nation that needs constant discourse. Um, there are several things that need the attention of not just government but also the people because it is only when the people come together in agreement and talk about issues that government itself can you know know where the issues are and then of course address them and so yes as nations go nigeria is a country that is in sore need of discussions like this and that is why Having him on a topic like State of the Nation this morning, I'm talking about the person of Mr. Zwahu Yamwaidi, gives me great pleasure. Now, Mr. Zwahu is not just a media practitioner, he is also a public affairs commentator. You're welcome, Mr. Zwahu. It's Thank great to have much. you in the studio thanks, this thanks morning. Indeed. Thank you for yes, honoring pleasure. our <coughs> invitation. <coughs> So let's jump right into it and talk about um, some of the things that have been rolling around in in in, in public um, in the public court of um, opinion, and um, one of them that is really topical is this matter on restructuring the nation, and everybody seems to have their own idea about what what's what is this restructuring what do we really 
want from restructure? Are we talking about the breakup of this nation? Are we talking about restructuring government? Or is it our policies? Is it the constitution that needs to be taken a look at? And so I would like to start from there because, you know, the, the term restructuring has been reverberating in Nigeria for quite a while now. And I'd like to get your take. All right. Thank you very much once again for having me. And, um, you know, uh, I'd like to put it on record that today is the 15th of January. And we call it the Armed Forces Day in Nigeria. And the reason, the simple reason why it is, uh, it is so uh, important for us is because uh, 55 years ago, on this day, there was the first military coup. First military coup six years into our nation that was 1966 you know by the five majors you know as they are they, they have come to be called now we'll tie we'll tie your question to this okay but i want to also digress to say that anybody that is talking about not understanding very well or having issues with with the whole concept of restructuring as it is being you know discussed or conversed in nigeria it is only being unnecessarily academical it's only being unnecessarily academical okay there was a system we had prior to 1966 you know from 1960 to 1966 people are saying let us go back to that system it's very very simple now, this country on paper is referred to as a federal republic. But in practice, is it indeed a federal republic? Okay? A federation, a federalist system of government is one where different component parts, you know, come together and decide to have bigger, you know, they are together as, as a country. But they have to they decide to have bigger aspirations which will be coordinated at the center that is the central government however there are many more things far many more things that they handle these component units you know handle on their own okay differently okay their aspirations smaller aspirations and stuff like that uh and probably it is as a result of their plurality you know, as a result of their plura, plu, plu, plurality. <laughs> yes. <Those laughs> you know? have a way of yeah, yeah. So, as a result of some of those things. And um, in Nigeria, when the colonialists came, of course, we know that there wasn't a Nigeria until 1914, 1st of January 1914. That was the amalgamation. Okay. When the different, the, the, the two protectorates, that's the southern protectorate and the northern protectorate were brought together as one country okay now all of this i mean this happened and it continued like that and then later we had southern region and uh, western region eastern region and the northern region where we are now northern region where we are now all of these regions well <coughs> they are even approximations okay it, it, it was uh, assumed that the north was basically hausa okay basically hausa uh, and uh, basically muslim because this was the seat of the caliphate okay however from the map as we have it the caliphate uh, uh, spanned uh, into you know present day niger you know and probably chad okay the Borno Caliphate also, because there were two caliphates. You know, we have the Sokoto Caliphate, we had the Borno, Tanem Borno Tanem Empire, Borno. which was also a caliphate because it was run based on the Islamic system of government. Mm. Okay, Isla Islamic system of government with its provisions. So it was a caliphate. There, so there was a Borno thing there, there was a Sokoto thing there. And so this constituted. And then, of course, when you go southerly, of course, as we have it, you have the different uh, animist you know uh, tribes and and all of that okay but the white man the british they just came and masked everybody and put so that's it so it was assumed in spite of the heterogeneity of this area they decided to make it homogeneous pretty much okay and then the southwest which was largely yoruba just largely 
Yoruba because even the Yoruba, okay, there are people that have argued, you know, some books. Was the Yoruba really a an a single yeah, homogeneous about, tribe, right. <laughs> or it's an amalgam of different? Because if you from from Owo, in Ondo State, from Owo to Akure, they speak differently. To Indeed. to Ondo town itself, they are different. Okay, do you want to go back to the Akoko axis and and all of that? Okay. Where you find okay the Akoko people also in Edo State and all of that. So but all of them were put together. So this is story for another day. Mm. And then of course in the east you had largely the Igbo people, then with the many other Niger Delta tribes and, and, and all of that. But then they were just uh summarily put together, you know, as three different blocks and administered differently. And so that's how it was. And so we came to have three regions as independence, okay, where you had the northern region, the western region, and, and all of that, okay? Mm -hmm. But even before that, there were issues, minorities' issues in the 50s that led to the establishment of uh, the, the Minorities Commission. That's the Willings Commission. And it came out with very, very interesting findings, okay, which the the colonial masters could not address because they were hurrying to leave and and all of that and then we had so we had a federal kind of government a federalist arrangement where you had three regions administered distinctly okay but came together in the middle you know to have a common determination on issues of um foreign policy on issues of defense okay on you know issues of larger macro economic issues and directions or issues of larger macro economic directions and, and and aspirations so that's how it is but smaller things you know were handled at the different and there was this competitiveness between the regions you know which was largely in fact which was healthy of course there will be skirmishes here or there and and all of that but it was beautiful so you see in the western region People like Awolowo decided to do to pursue education. Okay, I've written this in in on, on, on commentaries, you know, in the past. They pursue education, pursued education, and and stuff. The different regions had, you know, different aspirations, and they pursued them. And I I I believe personally, it's my opinion, and um, I think it's it's agreeable to many people who have gone back, that Nigeria made more progress. You know during that period than it has ever made really under whatever circumstances in fact okay let us really compare the 20 years or getting to 22 years now that we've had democracy since 1999 nigeria made more progress under that this so but so but when you're talking about that um mr zwahu let me quickly bring you to you know some of the points you have raised yeah now let's talk about you 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 know under this 22 years hmm. It wasn't so much as a different system as, oh, very it was, different. as it was democracy. When we're talking, you understand what I'm trying to say. We still had Nigeria broken up into states. Yeah. Okay, because I, I want us to have that delineation between um, what the issue really is. Is it the system of government that we're running or the type that we're running? I'm talking about, is it is it a democratic Oh, it is. It is democratic. Is that is that our issue? Is that what you're saying? Because if we're to look way back, we had more of military rule. Okay. In the years before 1999, yeah, than we had civilian rule. Mm -hmm. And you have made a statement. You said we had more progress in the years before. No, 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 no. I'm talking okay. about the years uh, between 1960 and 1966. Okay, we had democracy, you know, that time, and we had a truly federalist kind of democracy, where the different regions, which were the states at that time, we only changed the name from regions to states, okay? We had the different regions. Lines were drawn, Mr. Of Mr. Course. Swahu. Lines were drawn, and those lines... I don't lines, understand what you mean by lines. Lines. Uh, we, uh, we had geographical lines drawn. Mm -hmm. And for Between many people... Where? 
between the regions between in between the regions within and without those regions oh, but today even the, states, carved, even the states as we have them today there are lines there are lines of local governments there are lines of what so wherever whatever you do there will always be lines so the question is these lines that have already been drawn can they be erased because if, when we say go back yeah to you know the system no these are administrative units okay these are administrative i mean let me just even take it based upon what you are saying mm. we are talking about administrative units if this building and the other building used to be under two different people and the decision is made that it should be under one person then the fence between them will just be pushed down and it will be administered by one person but that's it, a simple, would it be that easy it's not it's not a problem but even that is not the issue that we are talking about mm. what we are saying what we are saying is that the different states that were there mm -hmm. you know prior to 1966 okay were administered differently okay and they determined their economic and political journeys differently okay and made money you know so we had the granite pyramids we had whatever in the west you had the cocoa and rubber and everything in the east you had palm everybody pursued their economic uh, uh, aspirations differently they didn't care about the other person in fact if they cared it would be in competition okay how do we also match their numbers and, and and all of that and whatever they got they contributed to the running of the central government which was headed by Tafa Balewa at that time. Do, do you understand? I do. Now, I do understand. What we have today is a situation where the central government is very, very strong, very, very strong, very powerful with 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 enormous powers. Okay, and it gives the states. Now we have uh, thirty-six states. That time we had only three states, and later four states with the creation of midwestern region that's present day a do delta okay we 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 we, we had we, we had four states okay by 1966 and they were administered differently okay and they were stronger that was why tefa um sat down okay he was the leader of the mpc northern people's congress he was the leader of the mpc and the mpc won the national more seats in the parliament okay it was a parliamentary system of government nigerians did not elect one person as president directly no they elected people to go into the parliament and the parliamentarians will elect their their leader the party leader at that time was sadona but sadona said no i don't i prefer to stay in the in my in my state in my region to develop it my deputy whom i trust very very much will go there and he went that staff went and became the prime minister do, 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 and, and that is head of government mm -hmm. that's uh, that's that's the arrangement <clears throat> so the center was not really attractive because the action was in the different states so what people are saying and what i am saying you know as like a broken record is that we should have the different states more powerful than the center as we have it now okay instead of having the center to be powerful i mean today i have headache in my house is who is the president buhari you have caused my headache okay i listened to you yesterday when somebody called and said this government has never had anything good well it is his opinion and you don't really blame him because it is the way our system is ordered to be if somebody does not wake up you know on the right side of the bed he looks at the president he doesn't even look at his governor much less his local government chairman because indeed local government chairman and what uh, heads are really you know uh, they, are, they are really figureheads they have nothing local government chairman uh, chairmen are in the pockets of governors they are in the pockets of governors isn't I mean, that, every government isn't that more of a generalized statement? Because we have a, quite a number of local government chairmen who are not who are not party members with there will, there a sitting will, governor. Yes, there are. Of course, of course, there are general statements, but in general statements, there are exceptions. But on a general note, when you have a uh, even if it is seventy-five percent of of local government chairmen at the beck and call. Of, of governors. Why do you think they are? No, the it is because court? of the system. It is because of the system. The system that we operate today, as our constitution, uh, constitution provides, 
okay is not a ground up system it's not ground to top system it is top to bottom eh? it's not a bottom to top but the other way round so power comes and our constitution provides that the different states you know through their state assemblies will make laws you know on how to administer local governments and stuff like that and that's why in kaduna state the law is three years of that's the tenure of local government chairman three years and in fact if you go to some states especially in the southeast of this country i don't think some states have had up to three different elections local government elections in their states they always appoint they always different governors will come and always appoint caretaker committees caretaker committees caretaker committees i don't i, I don't know whether you yeah. get it so in that regard there is even more democracy up north here okay when i talk to some of my Igbo friends you know about this i'll I ask them how many times have elections local government elections been conducted down there they don't even know okay but the fact is that we as flawed as our local government elections are generally as flawed we have conducted quite a, a, a lot of them especially in kaduna state and many other northern mm. states so so what we are saying is that let power emanate from the bottom okay so that the local government chairman is sufficiently autonomous and insulated from you know the whims and caprices of whomever of who of 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 governors uh, or whoever is governor at any point in time mm. okay well, and let let the different states determine their economic journey and aspirations okay and development uh, developmental ad, uh, uh, aspirations and then whatever they make here then they contribute to the running you know of so that when you know the kind of person that called yesterday and made that kind of sweeping statement you know no matter how wrong anybody made it when he wakes up on the wrong side of his bed okay he will not think of even the governor he will think about his local government chairman and what chairman see what have these people done for me not much not to talk of even the president nobody will talk about who the president you know mm. i hope you get you get that kind uh, we, of i'm sure quite a number of uh, even the listeners are following but we need to go on a commercial break at this time you're listening to mr young whitey zwahu who is not just a media practitioner but also a public affairs commentator and we will be right back after this commercial timeout. stay with us <laughs> This is the station playing today's best mix. Terrific. FM. In the morning, wake up. Wake up. This is Invicta FM. Well, thank you for staying with us through that commercial break. Still here with Mr. Zwahu Yomwedi. My name is Jacqueline Adebija on the program perspectives and yes we were talking about restructuring and all that goes along with it before we went on that commercial break and it is from there that i would like to continue at this point now mr zwahu my next question would be that we all know we've we, listening to you one gets that you would say that part of the solution would be you know making sure that power starts from the grassroots have stronger legs and well I, d I wouldn't want to use the word weaker but indeed a weaker um top mm -hmm. you know stronger legs weaker top now my next question would be as much as you know you've been able to explain this we also know that quite a number of things go along with this particular structure or way of things um that you described say for one state police you know it would then behove on each state to have its own security structure now my question is this if we have people in office who haven't been able to be faithful with the little that you know considering that the top is stronger than the bottom i mean you yourself were able to talk about governors who have refused to have that local government structure in place and no one has been able to question them why they've mm -hmm. not been able to do this and so if we have people 
who are unable to use the little I'm using the, the little in quote now. So what happens when a lot is when is, even is more power is entrusted? No, it's into not going to be hands. more power, more powers that will be entrusted into their hands. Power will be devolved. It means the powers will be in the hands of many more people. Okay, it will be in the hands of many people. Let me give you an example. Mm. We have police, Nigerian police. Okay, is it still police force? No. It's Niger the Nigeria police. The Nigeria police. Okay, we have the Nigeria police. And the Nigeria police is headed by the IG. And the IG is directly answerable to the president. Okay? Now, the people, all the people below the IG are directly answerable to the IG. I mean, along that line. Okay? Mm. So, even commissioners in the different states are directly answerable to their IG. Okay? Really, really, if a governor decides, okay, talks to a commissioner, you know, in most cases here, they have uh, uh, they have cordial relationships and, and they work. But whatever the governor asks a commissioner to do, in fact, the governor clears with his IG. He clears with his IG. Say that again. No, whatever the governor requests of a commissioner of police right. to do mm. the commissioner generally clears with his ig okay if his ig gives a contrary directive um there's going to be trouble okay so it depends on so what we are saying is if we have a state police or in fact if we have a local government or even they will be directly answerable to the highest power there and the highest power is closer to the people my governor governor Rufai, is closer to me here in Kaduna State, it is easier for me to access Governor Erufa than to access President Muhammad Buhari. So it's better for me. Okay? It is likewise going to be easier for me to access my local government chairman. I can actually walk there and enter like any other person. But you think if I don't carry a fine car, I will not I will easily enter government house, uh Kashim Ibrahim, Sir Kashim Ibrahim House. If I come with a fine card, they may not even, the police may not even ask me much questions. Where are you going to? I say, I want to see this person. They will just open the gate for me. But if I walk, they may keep me. I will sit down under the sun there. But my local government chairman, I can walk to any local government secretary. So you see how much easier it is. The more, you know, these powers, you know, uh, are devolved down. So that is the advantage. Uh, 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 and, uh, and you do not think that this, this mentality, I would like to refer it as a mentality of what that this this thing that you talked about, where you know um, people in office make make themselves largely inaccessible. No, to the people, no, it's would not, not necessarily. Down. It's not necessarily because they make themselves inaccessible. It is the paraphernalia of office. Okay, it is. It is. There is a saying in house about Eh? They are, you don't have a wicked king uh, do I have a wicked king or what mm. <laughs> except uh, except there are wicked courtiers generally speaking so would it's, we not have those courtiers even at local government level if no, the powers not were to be, it's to be not going to, no it's not going to be as difficult that's what I'm saying it's not why do to, you think so no it's not going to be as difficult definitely it's not going to be as difficult you think they will go and lock themselves up when all of us know each other Okay, is it in the Angwa, in the ward, or in, in the share? Is it? No, it's not possible. They cannot lock themselves up. It's not possible. Anyway, I, I don't think that is really... A, 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 and and you, were, you were talking something about where, uh, that, that, uh, that seems to suggest that, okay, will Nigerians, you know, be able to operate when they have more... Uh, when they are not even being properly accountable or duly accountable, you know, with the powers that they have today in most cases you know um uh how do how do i put this in, in most cases people operate within the context that they find themselves and in most cases it is self-preservation that drives people okay those days people graduated from school in fact before they graduated they had jobs waiting for them with a car with a house so why would they but today someone graduates he's 50 years old you know almost getting to 50 he doesn't really have he has not quite started life and even when he starts when will he get his house and whatever so they decide to 
you know, use their offices to do all kinds of uh, shenanigans. Okay, it's not because people are bad. If people have a system that 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 ensures that the ground is level and that they can sit down and project okay from now to five years to ten years this is where i will be people will relax okay where are our public schools our public schools and i went to to a public school an LEA, of course around that time it was generally there were very I, I, there, there were very few private schools at that time they really were okay um we went to, to, to those kind of schools. Uh, but today, we cannot afford to send our children to those schools because those schools are broken down. We are going to schools where we are paying well over 100, 200,000 naira per term, per child. Okay? How much do we receive our salary? And we want these children for their future to be, to be better. And so many of us will do a lot of untoward things in order to be able to survive. It's not because people are bad is because of survival okay so there are a lot of push factors and that is one of my 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 worry with the government of uh, president uh, muhammad Buhari, because he came promising to fight corruption and all of that but it's like he looked at corruption or the government looked at corruption as a, a simply a matter of morality okay morality or okay these people are bad these people that's why they are doing that no a lot of people are pushed if you put the structures right such that anybody i mean i went to school with children of commissioners okay the same lea and we had the same kind of quality of education and then we went to secondary school i chose to go to a different kind of secondary school because of my aspirations at that time okay but we ended up in the same university we lived in the same hostels with them and did everything i mean that's how it was everybody could go to the same kind of school okay but today enter uh uh, uh barnawa here eh? the, the primary school in barnawa is here who, who what children from what kind of homes go there and what can they produce we have the the government secondary school here okay God knows you hardly send your child to, to, to those places. You would rather struggle, you know, to send your children. So that's what we are saying. If this government had looked at it from the point of view of, okay, pluck some of those uh, pull factors, you know, pluck them, and then deal with the push factors to say, okay, how can our schools be good? How can our hospitals be good? What do we need to do? And make sure you strengthen all of those. I'm telling you, corruption within a period of time will begin to go so, down. But, but so quickly, before we go uh, to hear from the people who have been listening to you, I'm sure very avidly um, all this time, I would I would ask that did we not expect too much in this space space of time? Because we're talking about a system that we let go for over 60 years. It it's been it's been a process. Of what do you of, mean? Of what do you mean? What, what, I'm talking what do you about. Mean expecting? I, I, let's 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 uh, narrow in on 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 education. You right. mentioned education, so let's talk about education. Did our secondary and primary schools, these local education authority mm -hmm, schools, mm -hmm. the LEAs, did they just suddenly go burst? They didn't. Mm. It was a process. Teachers who were um, qualified teachers who are fading out of the system and even more qualified people not no, taking very, their places. Very good. It also, I, I keep coming back to Nigeria wanted to take care of its populace, wanted to do everything, mm -hmm. but there's hardly any country still narrowing in on education. There's hardly any country that can hold its head up education wise that doesn't have its citizens, probably with government's help paying money for good education mm. that education can be totally free um is also another uh, another very good um discussion mm. up for debate because even in co the nordic mm -hmm. countries those people that we look at that they, they've got fine systems of education fine systems of education they actually tax in different sectors and bring to education but even even they 
at some point that free education stops even for its citizens because they realize how much you need for education and by the way education has been identified as one very very important pillar when we talk about human capital development and when in, in when some we, countries in some countries there are different ways through which they fund this education but even the, okay. I, I said so, even at that it will get to a point where it stops being it free will, it will get but in fact we have not even started here so government has to be sufficient so, yeah, so the question is did we not expect too much change in this between time, when and when between 2015 to now let me quickly no, I'm, not, I'm not i'm not putting it i'm not putting it on the table of um of this present administration simply no i'm not putting it but i'm saying that this i just made an example mm. i just made example with uh, education mm. to say that if people have to pay so much you know in private schools okay and how much are they earning so if you want to deal with corruption then provide public education that people will be able to access more easily that is just an example that i that that i made in terms of health also the same thing okay the Very same thing so i'm talking about push your... and, and in fact, the whole corruption thing even mm. was 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 an example that i i tried to to bring but on a general note we are saying that devolve these powers and for me for me if buhari wants to write his name in gold okay one of the promises he made that even made the southwestern people and some of the southerners you know to join him and support him was this restructuring thing okay well <laughs> i i think that if he decide if he pursues it very very vigorously mm. buhari's name whatever complaint people have with this government honestly he's going to write his name in gold because government as we have it today is not helping is unwieldy is very heavy is not moving us anywhere imagine Kano state decide okay we'll pursue our education we'll pursue we'll, we'll determine what kind of education we even want our children to have they may say okay we want our children to have technical education ict education from ground to another state may say okay this is Kano knows where it's going to it knows where it wants to take itself to and its citizen to different states may have different aspirations okay and let's meet them 10 years 15 20 years down the line mm. it's going to be a different story but okay. when this thing is being you know arranged from the top if kano says this is what i want to do it will look for money you know and make sure that it achieves that okay we so that's what we are saying now the but, economics but but we need to take calls from our listeners now mr zwahu um but it, it, with all you've said i think i would like to ask in closing um all you've explained looks really attractive so the question begging to be answered would be why then is it proving so difficult no, because we don't have courageous political elite they are not courageous okay and let me tell you the system as it is today is profiting some people okay we know some people before they became presidents or heads of state or whatever we know the kind of talk they talked about this thing now they are on the seats they don't want to even countenance those things power is attractive you know and time for us to hear from you out there speaking with us zwahu yan yd he is a media practitioner and also public affairs commentator and he's been talking to us about the state of this nation and the lines are open the numbers are 81 once again, that's 081-40,989. And then we have 070-87800-989. That second number is 070-87800-989. Of course, you can send your um, text messages or, you know, WhatsApp posts to 090-98900-989. Let's go take your calls now. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, my brother. Good morning, your name? Ogunle Salola. You're welcome, Mr. Ogunle. Your thoughts? We are blessed. My brother, we have said everything. 
there is nothing but the truth. Let me tell you one thing. What this government and this country they don't want to hear. The lack of advice. Truth and the forgot truth is God. We are one in Nigeria. See what is happening. When this government comes on board, it comes on board of change. Look at the change we have to do. Look at the change we have to do. We cannot sleep and close our eyes to eat everything difficult for us. Please, the government should do the meaningful. Whatever you do today, it will become story tomorrow. Bye bye. All right, thank you, Mr. Gwoli. Let's go take another call. Hello, good morning. Uh, good morning, exactly. Welcome to the program. Uh, good morning to your guests. Thank you, good morning. Yeah, I'm Engineer Emmanuel. Engineer Emmanuel, <coughs> welcome. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I think your guest has spoken very well. But you see, the problem I will have. Now, if we do not fall on the, the first, I'll just talk in the general terms. Now, the local government is the, uh, the asset of the common man in the grassroots, not the governor, but the local government. Yeah, you get a point there, yeah, that the local government, the council, they are all in the pocket of the governor. But the problem we are having, if this is um, this uh, local government and this is to, 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 to take full control, having their immunity, having their, 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 their freedom, I think we will not even call him the president, we will not be even call him the governor, we will the local government chairman responsible. But this one that they take order, it is what the government likes to do to them, or whatsoever it gives to them, they may do it. So please, on a general note, we have an issue in this country. It has never been bad like this. What is the way forward? They should bring heads together. We have to move this country to Nigeria. Our country move it forward. Until we have Nigeria at Nigeria at a different point. If we are still saying that, no, let me do my best, do my own quarter, and go, we remain just like in a roundabout. Okay. Keep making this emphasis. If the present administration join forces with the past administration to tackle insecurity that is an apple, then by now, we will be things of the past. Okay. The day, Thank the, you. The summer, Thank you, Engineer Hello? Emmanuel. Yes, we, we, your line is... Okay. is your, 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 okay, thank you very much. Your line was actually going um, in and out, but we I think we got the general idea of what you were saying, working together and having Nigeria first in everything that we do, especially for the government. Hello? 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 Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning to the guest. Thank you, good morning. Francis, I'm from Nagamiba. You're welcome. Thank you. Honestly, your guest has really explained it the way it should have been, and Nigeria would be better. Because most of us did not uh, witness all the ways that uh, things were working well. We only had it as history. And today, the world has gone far away compared to what we are having in Nigeria as government as government as well. Because to be frank with you, that restructuring that some people are calling different names, that they don't actually understand what people are talking about restructuring, in fear of going back to the drawing board and let everybody do the things we are up to do the way it should be done. Some people are afraid of Nigeria working for the betterment of everybody. Because most of them are benefiting from this wrong governance and government that we are practicing. Because to be frank with you, Nigeria is not yet a nation based on what we are doing here. We are not yet a nation. Okay. Because there are so many things, characteristics of a nation that is not being seen in Nigeria. All we always see here is that budget, and at the end of the year, we hear that they construct road there, they do this, they do that, which we are not seeing as Nigerians. And our life keeps going worse. The citizens of this nation getting poorer on a yearly basis. Meanwhile, the government is spending trillions of naira or dollars. Okay. That's right. how a nation is being run. And the particular people are 
competing against the structure, well, thank competing you against much, what and the people want, your they want point, their country. Your point has been made. And thank you very much. Still taking your calls this morning. I'm sure Mr. Yawaiji is um, taking note. Hello, good morning. Good morning. You're welcome. Yes, my name is Sam. I'm calling from Kurumashi. You're welcome. Go ahead. Yeah, I've been li listening keenly to your guest this morning. Mm. And he has expressed so many things which I want to lend my voice to, too. See, we know that this government that came in came on the basis that there were problems on ground that needed to be solved. And this problem were identified and well expressed during the campaign. Now, unfortunately, they are coming and they are doing other things. They are not doing these things in the campaign the promises made seriously. The problem in Nigeria is that if we continue to operate with this different position that we have, we have been here. So the constitution is visited and adjustment will be made so that Nigeria can move forward. A situation where a local government chairman will be pocketed by the governor and you want the, the, the local government to perform. If it's not possible, a situation where the government is the and you have to go where there is no resources to, to carry out one thing or the other. Until there is tendency in every level of government that here will not go anywhere. Mm. So we need to go back to the drawing board and see into it that the constitution is visited and that every level of this government are giving a level of independence so they can operate in the independently and they will see progress in this country. I thank the guest very much and do have a lovely day. And thank you so much, Sam. And with that, I'll come back to Mr. Young Whitey. Um, You know, a number of people are pleased with uh, what you said. We Okay, we have um, someone sending in a message. Someone said, good morning. Most advanced countries, including Rwanda in Africa, have already restructured the economy. Let this present um, administration study other developed countries like the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, and use their model to restructure and develop this country. This can only be possible when we fight corruption with sincerity. Well, thank you so much, Kingsley from Sabo. Um, well put. Thank you so much. Uh, coming back to you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Young Waidi, um, a number of Nigerians would put blame at everybody's door but ours and this is why i say this let's start from these local government chairmen mm -hmm. who decide to fear the governor more than the people no 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 no. it's when, not simply it's not simply fearing the governor no, we're talking about a lot of people it's agree not, that not, you're in the pocket you know many of them are in the pocket of the executive yeah now my question is why do we have them coming back these people come back for elections and we do elect them mm -hmm. and so Really, even with the little power that the people of Nigeria have, what have they been able to do with it? With the fact that they are so disgruntled, so unhappy, but yet, year in, year out, they refuse to change status what is the quality? What is the quality of the kind of people that have presented themselves for election or that are capable of presenting themselves for election? You know that there are many, many fantastic people, decent people, that have been able to present themselves for election because the process, even the party party politics and the process is very, very rough and dirty. It's a merry thing. Okay, many people, I don't want that trouble. I don't want to go through that trouble. You know, look at the people that became members of the National Assembly, states, assemblies and whatever in 1999. Many people did not trust the, the process. And so good people did not present themselves. Those were the kinds of people that, that we had people that were talking, that ended up with the Toronto thing. And, and you remember all the Toronto saga and, and all of that. It was later that people, but the environment is very, very merry. It's dirty. Okay. Now, um, under these circumstances, as we find it, a lot of people will just go there to get what they want to get because the system will not allow them yeah okay the system will not allow them to be able to 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 do what they should do so and this issue of even first of all constitutional review to give local governments autonomy since before this government there have been reviews good luck attempted obasanjo attempted 
I'm not sure about Obasanjo. But yeah, yeah, but there were attempts, about three different attempts before this government. Even Buhari attempted to give local government autonomy. But these things were quashed in the differences. You know the process of uh, constitutional amendment. You know, when it, the constitution, it has to get a certain percentage from, you know, a number of states in, in the country. So when they come to the states, and in most cases, they, 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 they failed in in the northern uh, in the north and in the east in most cases those were the places that this review amendment for uh, local government autonomy failed even Buhari attempted it but it failed <laughs> you, you, you understand way because forward. these are people well way forward mr the, mr young why do it is that's why i say um you look at your situation and you determine for yourself whether it is an opportunity or not right now nigerians are probably at the lowest we thought we were at the lowest some time ago but nigerians are probably at the ebb of 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 their perception of this country because of insecurity because of the economics the markets are just crazy you know between last year and this year crazy 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 you know so nigerians are so dissatisfied and disgruntled but right now is the opportunity for us to do the right thing okay and this is the time for the government in power to say okay we can do this and go because anything you give nigerians today that it will make it will work nigerians today will make sure that they want it will accept it so this is the opportunity and that's why i say president buhari and his party the apc they have the opportunity to change this country now for the better forever hopefully okay it is left to them whether or not they want to go that direction and we call on all apc stalwarts the different governors that have lots of power my governor here in kaduna state erofi they have lots of power you know uh, 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 they can do a lot interestingly erofi chaired the apc committee on restructuring Okay, in 20, 2018, 2018, 2017, 2018, 2018, okay, there was a report that was handed to the APC. What have they done with it up until now? Well, let them pursue this thing very seriously. If you ask me very clearly, I want the different states to be autonomous and let power resides with the federating units, that's the different states, number one, and let us go back to the parliamentary system of government parliamentary system of government in which case anyway there are lots of we don't have all the time <laughs> we don't yeah, have but, that but time. that is what i want thank you all right thank you so much um for this time with us uh, mr young whitey zuahu um yes we see your text message but um it came in late so uh, there's really nothing we can do about that now but thank you for sending in sending your messaging uh, emmanuel the super reporter i see your message but we're done for today the discussion around and about nigeria continues stay with us on invicta and, and, 98. And please, let's pray let's pray for all our servicemen today is armed forces day indeed let's pray for them they are in different battlefronts Let's pray for them, please. Indeed. Very, very strong words by which to end the program. Let's pray for our servicemen, many of them still in Maiduguri and other places, securing this nation the best they can with the little that they have. May God be with them.